with more on the Avro controversy. Here's Hannah Gardner. Thanks, Peter. If an Avro Arrow had survived, it might have ended up here at the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum near Hamilton, Ontario. The arrow was killed nearly 40 years ago, but that hasn't stopped the debate over its demise and what Canada may have lost as a consequence. Tonight, we'll explore some of those issues. But we begin with a comparison of the facts and the fiction. The Nationals' Dan Bjarnason has the plain truth. And this is arrow number six, the last of its kind. No more will be produced. Some final engine tests on Friday, then wheeled away to what future no one knows. The government says plainly that a nation of 17 million can't afford to spend the bulk of its defense budget on planes of doubtful strategic value. You know, I know it's not the USA. The USA could have certainly kept it going with its size and the money and the, and the taxes paid. It, 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 but I would say, yes, it could, and it should have, by George, because it had the finest thing on Earth, and that's worth spending a few bucks uh, on when you get the very, very best. Well, it wasn't an exceptionally wonderful plane. It was a big plane, but it was essentially a, a plane that could have been built and designed and built on the basis of data that was available at that time. And many aircraft were, were like this. There was nothing extraordinary about it. So I think that supposition is rather, rather naive and misguided. Once a relation soared up there in the stratosphere, linked to this sleek needle in the sky. Canadian designed, Canadian built, a bold statement of our national power and pride. But what you are seeing here is one of the few things about the Arrow that everyone can agree on. There was such a plane, it flew, however briefly, and it was a beauty to behold before it was killed. Almost 40 years later, everything else in the Arrow story is still so full of debate and emotion, it's hard to measure what is real and what is not. Here at the National Aviation Museum in Ottawa is about all that's left of the Arrow, and it's this cockpit section here, behind me. Everything else has vanished, and that's what feeds the mystique of this aircraft. Only five arrows flew before the project was cancelled in 1959. All were cut up and destroyed, except for this ghostly shell now on display. But the arrow story has never gone away or grown stale. Morning. Morning. All right, we know it works on paper. Now we step into the unknown. Arrow 201, this is Tower, do you read? This four-hour mini-series, just shown on television, is merely the latest examination of Canada's fascination with the Arrow. The issues the Arrow triggered four decades ago are still alive today. How good was our technology? Who really killed the Arrow? And what died along with the plane? The keepers of the Arrow flame over the years and this TV movie argue that the Arrow, designed and built entirely here in Canada, would have been the finest, most sophisticated jet interceptor in the world. Arrow skeptics argue that the plane was overrated and its test data fudged, and it was at best not spectacular, at worst ordinary. Julius Lukasiewicz a professor of aerospace engineering at Carleton University. Well, I don't see that it was any different than any other such aircraft in, in, the, in those days. It was big, I mean, that, that is true. It was a rather large aircraft, bigger than, um, than any fighter aircraft, I think, that flew at that time. But other than this, when people say it was a head, they never tell you what, what, what was the advantage of that aircraft. I mean, as far as speed, there was no advantage. The aircraft that flew uh, faster in the same year. So Mach number two, which it attained just about Mach number two, that was nothing extraordinary to this. So what was extraordinary? I, I don't know what was extraordinary. I don't think anything was particularly extraordinary. We'll never really know how good the Arrow would have been. The test models never flew with the final Arrow engine, the Iroquois, which was still being developed. 
But even if its flight performance turned out to be exceptional, its effectiveness as a weapon is in doubt. Historian Jack Granitstein says the arrow was designed to shoot down Soviet bombers and was no longer critical in the age of missiles. The day the arrow was rolled out for its first public viewing was the day the Soviets put up their first Sputnik. The world was just about to move from, as people believed, from the era of the manned bomber to the era of the intercontinental ballistic missile. The Arrow was not going to be in squadron service in Canada until about 1962. And in 1958, looking ahead four years, looking at that strategic environment that was changing from bombers to missiles, did it make sense to sink so much money into a single weapon system that conceivably might be obsolete before it ever got off the ground in squadron service. We have touched down. <laughs> A point the movie downplays was the nature of the Arrow's mission. This all-Canadian plane was designed to launch nuclear-tipped American missiles. Diefenbaker Baker and company, who later got very unhappy about nuclear weapons around 1962 and 63, they, they, as a matter of course, accepted the idea that Canada would take nuclear weapons from the United States for the arrow, for the bull mark that uh, eventually replaced it, for our troops in Europe, for our Navy, for our Air Force in Europe. Everyone was going to have nukes.